in this lecture we are going to learn how we can change a property like a color based on a variable value like what is the current timer. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. So for that, we are going to create a variable inside of our content view struct. This variable, let's call background color, and it will be of type color. Here, we can return some value for the variable based on another variable. Like, let's say we want to base it on time to work. If time to work is true, let's set the background color to color.black. Otherwise, we will set it to color.white. Okay, so here I am going to save and refresh my preview. And this is the syntax for being able to set a variable based on another variable. So we're going to return color.black or color.white. That's what the colon means here. Color.black will be returned if time to work is true. Color.white will be returned if time to work is false. So that's what the question mark is for, is for conditional. And what we're doing here is just checking if time to work is true, we'll return color.black. If time to work is false, we'll return color.white. So you could do an if statement as well. You could check if time to work is true, then return color to black, else return color.white. But this is just a shortcut for that if statement. Okay, so we can refresh our preview, save this. And now how do we put this background color to use? Well, to set a background color in an application, inside of your body view, create a Z stack, which means elements are stacked one on top of the other on the Z axis. Okay, so then you can cut your vertical stack, that whole thing. Okay, cut the whole vertical stack and put it into your Z stack. And be careful that you don't miss any parentheses. Okay, you have to make sure that everything's lined up. Okay, then inside of your Z stack, the first the first element is going to be your background color. So you can just use something like color.black or color.white just as its own element to set the background color. Okay, there we go. We see the background color was black, then it goes to white during break time, then it goes to black again during work time. And you'll notice there's some white at the top, that's because that's the safe area. So that's typically not going to be colored, but you could even ignore the safe area by adding here ignores safe area to your colors. Okay, and you could add it either right here inside of the background color variable or when the background color variable is called. Okay, you'll see now the color will take up the whole phone screen. Okay, now how do we change the foreground color as well? Because the text, you can't read black on black text. Well, for that, we're going to just do a very similar thing. We'll just change the text color based on a variable value. So I'll create a variable here called my text color. It will also be of type color. And then I'm going to return time to work. So I'm returning a value based on another variable. If time to work is true, I'll return color.white. Otherwise, I'll return color.black for my text color. Okay, now, if I want this to actually work, though, I have to use that text color somewhere. So I'm going to put it on my entire vertical stack. So here in my Z stack, I have a vertical stack and go to the very end of the vertical stack. Make sure you have the parentheses lined up. That's where indentation comes in handy and add to it a foreground color property where we're passing in as the color our text color. That is going to set the font color of anything inside of the vertical stack to the text color. So now if we take a look at our preview, look at this. Now our preview is going to show us the background color is changing and so is the foreground color or the text color. So when it is here at work time, we are going to go to a black background. When it is break time, we go to a white background. Back to work time. Okay, awesome. And there we can see we've been able to change our foreground color based on a variable value. 
Okay, and if you want to make sure that you actually show the zero, then you can do here if work time remaining is greater than or equal to zero. Same thing with break time. You can check if break time remaining is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so if you just change up the logic a little bit, it can change your app. So here, now you'll notice we actually will see a zero there. Then we'll go back to work time and we will go all the way down to zero. Then we'll go back to the top, we'll go to break time, and this time we actually see the zero. So it can be helpful, sometimes people, users like to see the zero at the end of the timer, so that's why we have that there. So it's up to you, you can use greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited Membership, where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.